Mac Accessibility Keyboard, how to enable it, and how to edit the panel editor. So first, in order to enable the Mac Accessibility Keyboard, you go to your System Preferences. Once that opens, then you go to the Accessibility icon, located in the first chunk of icons. In the left-hand sidebar, you then scroll down to the Motor section and click on Keyboard. Once in Keyboard, navigate to the second tab in the right-hand sidebar called Accessibility Keyboard. There you'll note a checkbox that says Enable Accessibility Keyboard. Select that. A blue check mark will appear. And then the on-screen keyboard should appear somewhere on your screen. My keyboard has a black background. And as you can see, it has all of the top function buttons that you would find on the normal laptop keyboard. The number row as well as all of the letters. And this is set up as a standard QWERTY keyboard. Next, we'll look at the options in the lower right-hand part of that right-hand panel. This is where you can generally adjust the appearance of the keyboard. So if you don't like the black background with the white letters, you can select light for appearance, and that will change it so that the Letters are dark and the background is light. I'm going to stick with the dark keyboard. You can choose how quickly the keyboard will fade by checking off the fade panel after inactivity box. I am going to choose not to do that because I want my keyboard to be present at all times. The next checkbox is play sounds for keys and dwell actions. So if you'd like audio feedback for when the keys are clicked, you can check this checkbox. We'll talk about dwell actions in a later video. So when I click the Q, there's that keyboard sound. W, there's that sound again. I personally don't like that, so I'm going to uncheck this checkbox as well. Keys should be entered on this drop-down menu mouse down or mouse up. This um, should be on mouse down. The next two checkboxes are for text entry. So you can choose to have spaces automatically inserted and removed when you're typing. And you can select capitalized sentences automatically. This reduces the amount of times you have to press shift in the space bar on the keyboard. So you can select those if that works for you. Next, we're going to look at Hot Corners. It's the second tab in this window. Currently, all screen corners are set to Hide, Show, Home Panel. What that means is if you take your mouse cursor and you go to any of the corners and hold your mouse there, the panel, the keyboard, will disappear or reappear. So this is handy if you need to be full screen and the keyboard is obscuring your view. You can just bring your mouse to any corner. I'm gonna turn them off for three of the corners and just keep one. That way if I accidentally move my mouse to say the right-hand corner, nothing will happen. But if I move my mouse to the left-hand corner, the keyboard will disappear and reappear. There are other options in this menu, but those all refer to options for dwell click, which, as I said, we'll get to in another video. The third tab also deals with dwell, so we're going to ignore that for now. Head back to the general tab and press done. Okay. To change the keyboard options for your on-screen keyboard is through this small button in the upper right-hand corner. It looks like a filled-in circle with three dots, and when you hover your mouse over it, it is labeled Panel Options. When you select this, a window appears with multiple options. The first one is Custom Panels, which will bring open your panels that you've created. Currently, there are no custom panels. 
You can also zoom in the keyboard. So if the keyboard is visually too small or too challenging to target, you can increase the size. For example, if I select 150%, the keyboard gets significantly bigger on the screen. I'm going to go back to, well, actually, I'll leave it there. You can also change the appearance, just like we did in the options menu of the accessibility settings. So we can change this to a light colored keyboard. You can change the opacity or how well you can see through it. So just for a stark contrast, we'll select 30%. And now you can see that the keyboard is very translucent. So this is helpful if you are going to overlay the keyboard and you don't want it to take up a lot of the screen and you know the keys pretty well. I'm going to change that back to 100% for the sake of this video. Next are toolbars. So for toolbars, you can make your own, such as this one named Mail Panel, or you can select ones that are pre-made with the accessibility keyboard. Current text displays the text that you've typed in this upper part of the panel. Suggestions are auto-corrected suggestions based on letters that you've typed and they appear underneath the current text toolbar. And then the system and function keys are the top row of the keyboard. You can have those turned on and off depending on if you'd like them. Those give you access to the volume of the computer, some media keys, some shortcuts for showing your apps or all of your open windows, as well as screen brightness. But if you don't like these keys here, you can turn them off. You can also customize the order that they show up on the screen. So if I select custom keyboard toolbars, see this is when my keyboard might get in the way, so I'm going to minimize it. You can change where they appear. So if I would like my suggestions to show up below the keyboard, just as an example, I'm going to press OK. When I open up my keyboard now, actually I have to unenable and then re-enable it, you'll see that the suggestions show up at the bottom. So if I were to type a note, I want to say hello, you'll see that my suggestions come up at the bottom. I can select and then it is input into my text. Just going to close out of that and close out of my panel editor. Okay, back to the options menu. After toolbars, we have the ability to make the keyboard fade after a certain amount of inactivity, in this case 15 seconds. We can turn on dwell clicking, which I'll explain later. You can change your typing preferences, which were also available in the options menu of the accessibility settings. And then you can customize this keyboard or adapt your preferences. If I click on preferences, it takes me to the accessibility settings in system preferences. And if I select customize, it opens the panel editor. So those are kind of shortcuts without going to system preferences. Next, we're going to review what is called panel editor. So to get to panel editor, open again your system preferences. Navigate to accessibility. And then under the motor section of accessibility settings in the left hand panel, once again, select keyboard. And then at the top of the right hand panel, select accessibility keyboard tab, which is the second tab. 
near the middle of this section you'll see a button that says panel editor which you're going to select. Now the idea behind panel editor is that it allows you to create custom buttons on your keyboard to do things like open apps, enter pre-typed text, or change hardware settings like volume for example on a computer all from pre-made personalized buttons and I'll show you how to get to this custom panels within your keyboard after we make a custom panel. So the first step is to add a panel by selecting the add panel button at the top of the screen. When you click add panel a drop-down list appears with the options. So you can use an empty panel, current text, dwell actions, dwell home, a number of keyboards, or typing suggestions. For this, we're just going to use empty. And we're going to create our own little panel. Once you select the panel that you'd like to add, it appears at the left-hand side of the screen. This is labeled empty, but if you click on it, you can change the name. I'm going to name this mail panel because this is going to have to do with all of my email settings. Once you change the name, just click off and it will change. Now in the middle, we have this grid and at the right, we have um, information about the panel, which we're actually going to customize last. For the panel, we want to add buttons. So in the upper part of this screen, next to remove panel is add button. I click add button and in the middle of my grid appears a black button titled untitled. You can drag this button around I'm going to put it in the upper left hand corner of my grid and I'm actually going to make it a bit bigger so there are white boxes that appear around the button which enable you to resize the button any way that you would like. When the white boxes are around the button this means that you're editing the button and all of its properties will show up in the right hand side panel. The first property is name and this is the name of your button as it will appear on the keyboard. And I am going to call this Open Mail. What I intend to make this button to do is open the mail app. The second feature is the font size. I like the font size to be larger. So I'm going to select font size large. And then you can select the font color and a little bit further down the button color. So I'm going to change the button color first to blue to kind of match the mail app. And I actually like the white pretty okay, so I'm going to leave that. You can change the position of the text within the button. Currently it's at center, but you could put it at the bottom or the top. And you can also add an image. I'm not going to add an image to this, but that is an option. You can have the button speak out loud, which I don't think I will do that. And then lastly, you add an action. For this, like I said, I would like it to open an app. So I'm going to navigate down a little past halfway to open app. When you select that, another button appears at the bottom of this right hand panel. It says app, no selection, and then there's a button that says choose. I'm gonna select choose and then my application folder opens. And I want it to open the mail app, so I'm going to scroll down until I locate the mail app, click on mail, and then the lower right hand corner select choose. Now mail is selected, and when I click on this button in my new keyboard, it will open mail. The second button that I'm going to add is going to pre-type my email address for me. So going through the same process, I'm going to make my button. I'm going to name it address. 
I'm going to make the font size large. I'm going to leave it black. And then under action, I'm going to select enter text. And then under text, I'm going to say my email address, me at gmail.com, which is not true. But there's that. Um, you can treat this as a sticky key, but I am not going to. So I'm going to click off, and I'm going to add one more button. So again, just going through the regular motions. And for this one, I'm going to have it put in my password, which is also an enter text. My password is going to be onion hurricane dollar sign. I'm going to enable, name this PW and I'm going to make the color pink. Okay, so this is just a small selection of buttons. If I click on the grid so that no buttons have the white squares around their perimeter, we see that in the right hand um, panel there is the panel settings. So you can select which applications this is available for, but I'm not going to select one. I just want it to be available whenever. I want it to show in my custom panel list, but you can also have it show as a toolbar. And we're going to have it show the home button so that we can get back. All right. So now that we have this, I'm going to X out of panel editor. And then I'm going to re-enable the accessibility keyboard. If the accessibility keyboard was enabled when you did the panel editor, just uncheck it and then recheck it once you've exited out of the panel editor. So now when I select panel editor, my on-screen keyboard comes up. I'm going to navigate to the custom list button, which looks like a hamburger menu, all the way in the right hand corner of the keyboard in the function row. When I select that, it brings up my list of panels. I only have one panel called the mail panel. I'm going to click on that. And then we have my custom panel. So if I click the open mail button, it should open up the mail app, which it did. And then to demonstrate these two enter text buttons, I'm going to open up the notes app create a new note. And because this is just a text editor, I should be able to enter these two text pieces. So if I click address, it should say me at gmail.com, which it does. And then if I hit password, it should write onion hurricane dollar sign, which it does. To go back to the original keyboard, I would press this tiny little home button. You can also build another button to go back. And then here's our regular keyboard again. So that was one example of how to use Panel Editor. Dwell Control is an alternative way to use the mouse so that you don't have to physically click left, right, scroll. All of these options become available to you in the software. In this case, they become available to you through the accessibility keyboard. To access Dwell Control, we go to System Preferences, our Accessibility Settings, and then Keyboard. We select Options, and in the third tab at the top of the screen is Dwell, and this is where we're going to enable it. So, the first checkbox is to allow Dwell Action to activate toolbars in the panel, which we're going to check off. The second one is show dwell actions in the menu bar, which we're also going to select. And then always dwell in panels, also going to turn this on. For the color, you can change the color of the dwell cursor. I'm going to choose orange just because I think that will be a nice color that stands out. You can choose to have the pointer zoom in after a certain amount of time. 
you can have it hide the dwell time indicator, which I'll show you momentarily. And then these default dwell actions, we're going to keep all of this the same. At the bottom, you see default dwell time. This is the amount of time that you must keep your cursor still in order for the dwell action to take place. Currently, it's at three seconds. This will be a nice amount of time to demo so you can see what's happening. The panel dwell time is how long you need to dwell in your accessibility keyboard before it's activated. Most users have this at a faster pace because they're familiar with their toolbar layout. And if you're typing, you don't want to have to hover over a letter for a long amount of time. So you'll see this be a very small number for experienced users. And then dwell movement tolerance is just the amount that you can move the mouse before the dwell starts over. So if someone has tremors or is using maybe head pointing, you might want to turn this feature up. So for now, I'm going to select done. I'm going to enable my accessibility keyboard. And now at the top, you see we have a new toolbar. And when I hover my mouse in the toolbar, you get this orange circle that follows my cursor. This is called the dwell cursor. So let's say I want to close out my accessibility settings. Normally to do that, I'd take my cursor, I'd bring it over the X, and then I would left click. To complete that using dwell, I'm going to take my mouse cur cursor, I'm going to hover over the first button, and you see that the orange circle gets smaller. It's like a little timer. So what happened was I selected the action, which is what all of these are, they're different actions, brought my mouse to the area that I wanted to left click, and then it left clicks after a certain amount of time goes by. You'll also see that the assigned action is told um, in the top menu bar, and it also gives you an option to change the dwell options um, up here as well if your accessibility keyboard is not open, for example. So this is left click. The second button is double click. The third button is right click. And then we have drag and drop. This is a interesting feature. So I'm going to select drag and drop. I'm going to select the top of my keyboard. And now it's holding it down. And I can move this keyboard around without holding down the left key. So now I'm going to place it here. The timer is going out, and now my keyboard is moved, and I'm back to default left click. The fifth option is scrolling menu. So right now, nothing on the screen is scrollable, so this scroll function isn't going to work. But let's say I was looking on the internet. So I'm going to use my left click button. And I'm going to open this Safari window that I had pre-prepared. I'm going to make my keyboard a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to use the scroll function. I'm going to hover it over the Safari window. And now you see that these four arrows appear in the cardinal directions. If I hover my cursor over the bottom arrow, it scrolls down. And if I hover over the up arrow, it goes up. So that's how the scroll function works. So I'm just going to go back to my left click here. Close out of the internet. OK, the last two buttons. The sixth one is the options menu. This is a nice option because when you let your dwell timer go out. You get all of your dwell functions in a circle around your cursor. And it's going to execute that action at the point where you stop the cursor. So if I wanted to right click on my desktop, I would then select right click. And as you can see, the menu came up. 
So then if I wanted to execute an action, maybe use stacks, it does my left click for me. The last button on the keyboard is pause dwell. So when dwell is paused, I can move my mouse around without worrying about activating anything. So that, in a nutshell, is dwell control.